What's up, T weirdos? This is James. <laughs> this is Daddy from TDB. Bring you guys episode 315. We're just getting more, prog- like, progressively more rude to our audience every single I, well, episode. I, I can't be beat by you. It can't be like, what's up, you T freakamabobs? And then I'm like, hey guys, this is James. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be that guy. I yeah. gotta, I gotta keep up. I, I gotta it. hang out with the cool kids. I get it, man. Um, so what are we drinking here, Danny? This is a weird tea. This is Golden Buds that has been um, prepared, I guess, um, produced as a ripe pour. A ripe pour, and I'm not going to use too much um, here, but you can look at the leaves uh, themselves. They do look a lot like Golden Bud. And then it was stored in a wooden rum barrel, according to this. Yeah, I guess that matters. I, I don't know. Maybe we'll taste the rum in it. It does have a really unique flavor, though. Uh-huh. This tea is made by Liquid Proust. Proust. Or he's Proust. the sorcerer, at least. Yeah. Or the sorcerer of the, uh, the, the sorcerer tea. sorcerer of the tea. The sorcerer. Um, <laughs> but uh, this tea was supposedly brought to the Midwest Tea Festival. Shout out to our audience in the Midwest. Uh, maybe you folks have tried this tea before. It's a unique tea, definitely, and that's why I wanted to bring it to the show. Yeah. I think that one of the things that we were talking about before the show was... Um, like when do we? How do we know when we want to bring something onto the show? And oftentimes for me, it's that I have enough to have multiple steepings, or multiple sessions, and then I'm like, mm, this is good. I want to have it again, and then I go and grab it again, and so it just sort of like physically stays out in my house as yeah. opposed to like going into the dungeon of tea that I, yeah, yeah. That I have at this yeah. point. Yeah, <laughs> and then you and then you have it enough, and then you'll bring it back. Here. Right, and I'm like, yeah. mm, this is this is unique or interesting. Yeah. So. Those of you that don't know our process, a lot of the tea goes to Denny, and Denny is our, uh, you could interpret him as like a scout or a black hole that just absorbs <laughs> all the tea. Oh, uh, yeah. But Ooh, that does have an interesting flavor. Isn't it, yeah. right? It's like a little sharper. I, I could get the sort of alcoholic vibe to it. Uh, but uh, yeah, and so uh, tea will sometimes come back from Denny, and in that case, it's usually pretty good. This is the um, this is the equivalent of Hawking radiation coming right. back. So we can. The question is, can it be measured? Yeah. Shout out to all of our theoretical physics nerds out there who <laughs> probably actually know way more about that stuff than I do. I only like read Wikipedia and watch World Science Festival videos. Okay. But... I don't even do that. I don't. So. I don't believe in Wikipedia. It's, I think it's. <laughs> I think it's fake news. No, just kidding. Uh, uh, so, but anyways, this tea, I think you've had it for a while cause I don't remember this tea, uh, arriving. So uh, I don't, <laughs> so I think that we received it in the not too distant past. Okay. Got it. Okay. Anyway. Um, I don't know, honestly, I don't know. I just moved. And so I was moving all my tea. It might've just, but point being, this is a kind of a unique tea. So it's a black tea that has been again, prepared like it is a ripe and I was drinking it, and I was like, this is just kind of interesting and unique and weird, and it hits a flavor profile that I'm not familiar with, so I wanted to bring it on to the show and get James's feedback on it. Cool. And I've never had this tea, for clarification. Uh, it's not brewing super dark. Uh, is this about color you expect? Yeah. Okay. Cool. It is. All right. Cheers. Cheers. That is a different flavor, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, quite different. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely uh, pick up on that sort of rummy, alcoholic Plum, vibes to it. Plums, Yeah, I think, is one of the most strong. Do you get the ripe in it? Uh, yes. Uh, right? I'd say it's like 50% ripe, 50% other stuff, yeah. and I'm still figuring out what's going but on. But not golden buds. No, it's not. it doesn't taste like a golden buds, right? No. Uh, yeah, and I've had some of those, and those tend to be, I mean, they're firmly in the ripe category. Right. They're rich, they're creamy. Uh, but it's almost like someone, like, re-engineered, like, the uh, aroma, aromatics, especially of this tea. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's unique. So there's a little, there's, there's a light, um, really juicy fruitiness to it, plummy and cherries just a little bit. Um, there's, there's a sense of that woodiness to this brew, but there's also aliveness to it. It has a sort of puery aliveness to it, I think. Um, and it has really interesting fruit on it. Really yeah. Interesting. Yeah. The fruit and it's, it hits a lot more higher notes than you would expect a ripe to normally hit. Yeah, so. totally tropical. And but if we sweet. think about it, it's sort of like these ripes, people do experiment with 
with them in terms of like different things. It's like they store them in like those uh, old uh, citrus things, mm. like the orange peels or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting though. Well, um, I hope that we're not tasting too too much of the storage on this because while um, unique, I do I would hope that it just is the interesting combination of so there's three things at play. There's it being a black tea, it being a black tea, or, brew, or is it a ripe tea? Well, it's a it's golden needle because there's material. golden needle ripe too, where it's just processed. Oh, it's straight up as a ripe. Right, right. Oh, okay. So that could be it then. Yeah. Because it's not specifying that it's a black tea that it, that has then been. Yeah, yeah. Ripened. Yeah, if you I mean will. you can have golden needle black or golden needle ripe, and uh, I mean it's golden needle. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. It's unique. I'll let that steeping go for quite a bit because I want to sort of test this we're getting into the riper yeah and it color. really doesn't brew as dark as i would expect a ripe to brew which is interesting no, to it's me more too. um auburn and orange i mean it's it's you know it's in the red but a little bit but yeah. um auburn that's a good word we red. should start to do color and just like rgb scale <laughs> like this is a zero <laughs> yeah, f, 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 <laughs> five seven uh, <laughs> b uh, a yeah. <laughs> I think our audience is probably weird enough to understand what that was about. <laughs> yeah. Maybe half of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The half so that this, work this on was the steeped internet. for quite a bit longer. Yeah. Um, the steeping. And uh, so let's let it hang out for a second. But yeah, I mean, really interesting nose on it. Maybe almost a hint of chocolate on it now. And uh, yeah. F- strange. Do you get the, would you have guessed the sort of rum alcohol if you didn't? If I didn't know, yeah, no didn't way. Know. Okay. No way. I would have no idea how to place this tea. You would have been like, what the fuck? I, yeah, I, I have no clue. I, I think, just being honest about it, I think I probably wouldn't have no idea. I maybe would guess that this is a really weird ripe. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. If I had to call it something, but like, yeah. Because I, I, I think, so I don't drink alcohol very often at all. Uh, so uh, for me, it's like the aroma immediately drags me into that. I, I would have also had a extremely difficult time placing this mm-hmm. tea, but uh, the alcohol, I think I would have been tipped off that it was some form of alcohol. I don't know if that I would have guessed rum. Uh, but, yeah. yeah. It has certainly those sort of typical flavors that you would drink with a rum drink, like fruity and mm, tropical yeah, yeah, flavors yeah. and things like that, but um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Flavors I do not associate with the Midwest. Uh, no, not at all. The Midwest just... It's just corn, and then <laughs> yeah. some more corn. Yeah, some corn, <laughs> some, some ripe poor and like a corn husk or something. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Are we in the alien? I think yeah. I was gonna say. I think, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we've. I think we've like just everyone <laughs> brush stroked everybody. It's kind of like Nietzsche. He he made fun of everybody equally. <laughs> yeah, equal opportunity hater. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, except for Emerson. So, anyway, here we go. I think I mentioned that on the show before, too. Yeah, this is a unique tea. It has that chalky, cherry um, ripeness to it a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, Yeah. Really interesting. For me, I can't figure out if I would... How much... I'm, I'm enjoying this tea. I can't figure out if it's something, like, I really... I, I do enjoy, I would like enjoy if I had it more often or if it's more of like the novelty because it's certainly unique, not having had it before especially. It reminds me strangely of that yellow fungus, um, um, don't, uh, what is that yellow? Uh, the Fujuan, the, the, the Hunan the, Heicha. The Hunan, yeah. yeah. It reminds me a lot of the, the Hunan Heichas in that... It has a surprising amount of sweetness in it. It's unique and hard to place, mm-hmm. um, it, and uh, a little fruity. Um, yeah. So similar in that sense, I think it's. So for me, there's some teas that I'm like, whoa, I don't know what this is like at all. Yeah. And that those hechas tend to be like that as well. Yeah. Um, really tasty though. So James, do you think this would pass the mom test? Uh. I do not know. Um, you know, I think it might actually. I think so. I, I think I think unless someone was really averse to alcohol, uh, like uh, then my mom does, cannot take alcohol at all. So I don't think she would like it. But uh, I do think that 
the flavors actually are probably more friendly than your average ripe core and maybe less foreign as well because it really has that nice, bright, uh, tropical fruit uh, thing going on, uh, more so than you would expect from any ripe core. Totally. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so in that sense, and there's no astringency or something. It almost depends. If someone is really off-put by alcohol, they mm -hmm. would not care for this tea. Mm -hmm. But in that, I... I, th I think it's actually a pretty... I could see it being a crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I'm not getting it tasting like alcoholic per se. Um, it just has flavors that are reminiscent of that. Right. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's a unique tea. I think that tea drinkers who have not been exposed to a tea like this before would find it interesting yeah. and enjoyable potentially. Um, is it a incredible best in class type of tea i don't know i don't know enough about this class to, to to make a comment like that is it the most exquisite tea i've ever had in my life probably not no but is it an interesting tea to to definitely try and get exposed to yeah i mean it's yeah. certainly as you mentioned i think from the outset it's unique right i would kind of take this as sort of like an alternate more westernized version of like the the ripe pour and like a tangerine or something like that mm. um how about uh, in sort of the wilderness, the ultralight challenge? <laughs> this would probably be a little bit harder to do, I think, because it would just get a little bit too strong. I could see it working, though, actually, because it's not a tea that you can overbrew too much. It seems like it was just going to get more viscous. I think, like, a ripe, it might end up being okay. I don't know. Honestly, I don't have a good answer. Um, I could see it being nice sort of, like, around uh, in the evening, around, mm -hmm. like, a campfire or something like that, mm -hmm. having... Sipping away at this tea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a pleasant, easy to drink sort of flavor profile. Although we've only had three or four cups, and in that ripe way, I have that sort of like lasting astring not quite astringency. It's like puckery a little bit, and yeah, you know, I've been drinking something that's just not just a not like shot like we had the last episode. Right. Yeah. It's pretty warming too. I would mm -hmm. say overall mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really interesting. Um, Give these folks a Google. Liquid Proust. Liquid, yeah. liquid Proust. 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 Yeah. I don't know. Proust. Um, and uh, James, if folks want to learn more about tea in general? Uh, yeah, they could should check us out on tdb.org. Uh, and uh, so hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I agree with Denny. Check out Liquid Proust. Uh, he does a lot of group buys and stuff like that. So if you're into that and you're into sampling some interesting things, which he does uh, get, uh, then I don't know if this tea is still available, but uh, definitely give him a, uh, a look. Cool. We'll see you guys next time.